Always a fantastic day to break out a boomstick. Welcome back everybody, Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. We got a law enforcement Benelli M3 convertible. Yeah, buddy, it's gonna be one fantastic day. Let's have some fun. I've got some federal flight control buckshot loaded up in this bad boy, and we're gonna proceed to lay waste uh, to everything in front of us uh, in a very methodical manner. All right, let's do it. Yeehaw. Smooth operator. <laughs> Smooth operator. All right, yes. I love these shotguns. Uh, they're fantastic. Um, you can't go wrong with a Benelli. We're gonna be diving into this one a little bit, having some fun as we go. Uh, before we get started, I would like to thank our friends at Sonoran Desert Institute for supporting our videos. SDI's got some great distance learning programs in the field of gunsmithing technology, reloading, that sort of stuff. If you're wanting a career in that field, they're definitely the go-to folks. They got some great financial incentives, awesome instructors, really great coursework. Check them out, Sonoran Desert Institute, SDI, and tell them we sent you. All right, we're gonna dive into this. This particular one is an LE model. It does have the collapsible stock. It gets things nice and short. This one has the full seven shot tube. Uh, it holds seven plus one in the chamber. So this is an eight shot Benelli M3. Fantastic shotgun. I really, really love these. Uh, this is an inertia gun. Um, uh, now, one of the, the neat things about this particular gun is that it is a convertible from pump to semi. You guys might be familiar with a little shotgun called the Franchi Spass 12. If you've seen any number of popular culture and different movies and things, Jurassic Park, whatnot, you've seen the Spass 12s in a ton of different video games and movies, and it's a very famous shotgun. They are really, really cool shotguns, but as a convertible that you can actually get and use and, and deploy in a little bit more practical situation, uh, the M3 definitely takes the cake as being the king of convertibles. Um, I really like these shotguns quite a bit. All right, I'm gonna demonstrate that uh, capability to go from pump to semi. Uh, now, one minor detriment on the M3 that I am not a humongous fan of, well, I'm not gonna say I'm not a fan of it, but it's just something to consider is that you actually you don't get to ghost load this particular gun because of the, uh, the way the bolt is cut, okay? Uh, on the M4 and some of the other Benelli's, you can get a round on the carrier and get that uh, capacity up to nine rounds, okay? Especially if the uh, crimp on the shell that you're using is, is just right. Some of the longer crimp shells, even with the ghost loading on an M4, you can't always get the full tube in there because of the, the type of rounds. Okay, there's our our full tube, we're gonna go ahead and rack one in there and top it off so we got eight shots. Now, if I wanted to put this gun into pump mode, all right, I've got this little lever up here where you can unlock the forend. You see how it's just unlocked, okay? Now I'm in pump action mode. So when I shoot a shot, I'm gonna have to manually pump it, okay? So I'll show you. We'll shoot a shot. All right, you notice the gun didn't cycle because it's in pump mode. Now I'm gonna pump it. All right, now we're in pump mode, okay? We'll do another shot. Look at that flight control. Okay, if I wanna pump it again, now I got a round in the chamber. Say I wanna put the gun back into semi-automatic mode. I can lock it back up, and now I have a live round in the chamber, and the hammer's back. Now we're in semi-auto mode. When I shoot, the gun is gonna run semi-automatically, okay? Sorry, gopher. Dude, son, look at that freaking pattern back there on that target with that flight control. That is freakish. Okay, I felt the bolt lock to the rear. That lets us know that we're empty, and then we can go through and reload uh, the gun. <laughs> okay, so you'd probably be asking, well, why would you need some sort of a convertible? What's the point, right? Wouldn't you just run the gun in semi or run it in pump and then just be done with it? So let's say that, for instance, you're running a beanbag load or less than lethal or a door breaching round or something like that, and it may not be able to semi-automatically cycle the action. That gives you the option to say, maybe have a beanbag round or less than lethal or something like that and breach the door and then pump it. And then if you've got a live round behind it, put it back in semi and now you've got a combat gun right behind it. So it gives you some flexibility, right? Or let's say that, uh, 
mission specific type of situation. You're going to run the M3 maybe as only less, less than lethal, like for riot control or something like that, or less than lethal or noise blanks or something like that. Whatever you're going to do, maybe you're going to scare some critters out of the field and you need to just make some noise with some blanks that wouldn't cycle the action. You can run it and pump and run those loads and have a little fun, whatever you need to do. And then you can convert it back into a semi-auto. So it just gives you some flexibility. Okay. All right, the bolt's closed. I'm going to go ahead and load some more. I've got a couple of more rounds of uh, Federal Flight Control ammunition here. Okay. Now you notice when we invert this gun, okay, you do have that pistol grip kind of in the way. And I know some of the guys that are running these like as a race shotgun, you'll notice a lot of the people running race guns will typically have more of a straight comb stock without the pistol grip because their speed loading tools get in the way. See, if I was running a speed loader, I can't get in, uh, you know, get past this grip. So for a tactical environment, people running gloves or people, you know, using them in that type of a situation, the pistol grip is nice because it helps you kind of control the recoil and hold onto the gun a little bit more. If someone tried to snatch this out of your hand or something, you got something to hold on to a little bit more sternly. So the pistol grip has its point. There's a reason for having it. And then, of course, the stock can be adjusted any length. Now, unfortunately, these guns are not that available uh, to civilians. They're kind of hard to get in this exact configuration. But, buddy, if you're going to have an M3, this is definitely the one to have. All right, we're in semi-automatic mode. Let's have some fun. We got more flight control. And I have some pumpkins and some watermelons and some sodas and all kind of nasty things back there. We're going to shoot with some slugs. But first, I'm going to take out some of my poppers and I'm going to hit my gophers here and uh, punish them a little bit, have a little bit of fun. All right, ghost ring sights on this gun. Sit down. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, sir, Bob. Nice. Okay, I'm going to get some slugs in this bad boy. We've reached that point in the video, boys and girls, where we're going to start dealing out some serious punishment. And we're going to go ahead and just swap straight up to, uh, you guessed it, the round with the bear on the box, the Bernicke Black Magic, 1,600 feet per second, three inch, one ounce slug, uh, one and three eighth ounce. So this is some serious medicine. Uh, this gun is chambered for two and three quarter and three inch shells. Um, this is certainly on the upper end of the echelon, okay, of power. But we're going to go ahead and just shoot four of them because that's all I've got right here. Um, these things are kind of hard to get. I'm going to leave the gun in semi-automatic. All right, we got our ghost ring sights. I'm going to take out a soda, a watermelon, a pumpkin, and another and another a couple of, couple of pumpkins, a watermelon, and a soda. Okay, ghost ring sights with slugs. You ready, Chad? Ready. All right, here we go. Vaporize. Look at that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Get it right out of here. Look at the hole in that pumpkin. <laughs> uh, all right. A couple more slugs. You know, I've got a little bit of a variety. We'll probably shoot a few on the gong back there. I, and I do have a big old pumpkin back on the burn back there. I've got some duplex. Hexalit expanding steel slugs. We're going to take out a few sodas and a few of our remaining targets with those. Um, and those look like that. That's kind of a cool looking slug there. Okay, it's got this sort of uh, rubberized or polymer tip in there and it expands and pushes it out. Makes a nice cavity. If you've got a creature big enough to shoot with it, um, it's, it's a pretty diabolical little slug for hunting and everything. That's the Hexalit 32, one and one eighth ounce. 500 grain heavy field load expanding steel slug. So I've got a few of these left. Here we got about a box worth. I'm gonna load five up and we'll uh, shoot them. And you can see that's a big old high brass load. Okay. These don't kick nearly as hard as the uh, Black Magics, but uh, definitely uh, quite the load. Okay. Have a little fun. Okay, you ready, Chad? Yep. Okay, a couple of sodas, watermelon. You guys get the, get the gist here, okay? Here we go.
sniper. <laughs> One laid on its side and just absolutely just disappeared. It literally vaporized. Okay, we got a couple of more slugs that we can probably try. And I also have some Federal, or I'm sorry, Remington buckshot that we're gonna try as well. There's a really odd smell in the air right now. I've got a little whiff of, of soda, watermelon, a little pumpkin spice. I think it's fall, I think, so we're getting there, okay? All right, these are cool, okay? This is a Berniki load as well, the Tactical Home Defense Shotgun Slug. It's a one ounce slug for smooth bore shotguns. These are relatively light on the recoil spectrum. They, they don't really kick that hard. I've only got a couple of them left. We're just gonna burn them up. Uh, these are fairly accurate. Let's give them a try. Had a little bit of corrosion on that one. Oh, we'll see if it runs. Okay. All right, I'm gonna shoot one on the big pumpkin way back there in the back, and I'm gonna put a few on the steel plate back there. Just see how good it wallops that plate back there, okay? And uh, we'll see if it disturbs that pumpkin on the burn back there. It's a one ounce slug, okay? Then we're gonna shoot a little more buckshot. Oh yeah, those are great. Like those a lot. Okay, we're gonna go back to buckshot and we're gonna stroke out some of these Remingtons here. Now, this is not a slouch of a load. I've got a couple of different ones. We got some Remington 15 pellet double lot buckshot, three inch moving at 225. So this is definitely a stout load. Let's go ahead and load a few of these in here and give them a try. Now look at that. That's you got to get your big boy britches on for that. That's that's not a joke of a load. That's 15 pallets of double lock going down range. Uh, this is this is going to hurt me equally. Okay, <laughs> I'll tell you what. We'll we'll put it in pump mode for this just to have a little bit of fun and demonstrate that a bit. All right. So let's say that we didn't put around in the chamber and we got an empty chamber, and I want to just run it in pump mode. I can unlock it, and I just run it as a pump. So now we're in pump mode, and I'm going to proceed to uh, take down a couple of our extra pumpkin remnants here and I got one soda left. All right, here we go. This is some stout medicine right here. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, we'll put it back in semi. All right, now we're gonna do some triple lot buck. Let's have some fun with this. This is some Remington triple lot buckshot, 1225 feet per second, three inch shell, and that's 10 pellets, okay? So this is, uh, you know, a very similar amount of payload, uh, but with just a different shot size, okay? Let's try these out. And then we're gonna put the gun back in semi, fully semi-automatic, if you will. <laughs> Okay, you know this gun, we're, we're putting some pretty stout loads through it, but it really doesn't kick that bad at all. It's a very comfortable gun to shoot, very accurate, and uh, you just can't go wrong with a solid Benelli. One thing I want to mention as well, uh, you can run a pick rail on top of these. This one just has the plug, uh, the whole plugs are like plastic uh, plugs they put to protect the threads. I don't have a rail on this one. This one's just set up with ghost ring sights. Uh, one other mention that I'd probably uh, want to just kind of put in there for, for those of you that, that may not know is because you are dealing with like the inertia system on this gun. It is a little bit picky about what you try to hang off of it versus the M4. One of the nice things about the M4 is you can put any amount of rails and accessories you want on, on it because of the way it operates, the way the gas system is designed. It's a lot more forgiving of the weight of the gun changing but because of the way this gun operates with the inertia system, if you go weighing this thing down with too much crazy extra stuff, it can start to affect what the gun will reliably run, especially in semi-automatic, obviously. But I guess the nice thing about that is if you convert it to pump, uh, you can run whatever you want, regardless of what's on the gun. So you do get some flexibility there. And I think that's really what the M3 kind of beckons to is the ultimate in shotgun flexibility for those of you that are looking for that. Okay, so here are the uh, 10 pellet triple op. We don't have a lot left. We've kind of laid waste to everything, but uh, you know what? We're not gonna let it deter us. Okay. Woo! Mm. 
Man, look, <laughs> look at those buckshot holes in that pumpkin way down there. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, I think it's probably all my shoulder, my poor little shoulder can handle for the day. I mean, I, I love uh, throwing a little 12 gauge down range, but I think we're going to give her a little bit of a break. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. That's a Benelli M3 LE Tactical, full length tube. Uh, adjustable stock, really great piece of hardware, definitely amongst the Cadillac of shotguns out there. Uh, I know these do represent a considerable investment. If you're looking for something that's along the lines of an M3, but you don't want to buy a full-on Benelli M3, there are a lot of those Turkish import shotguns that we'll probably get a hold of. There's some copies out there that are pretty decent, that hold up great, that you can buy for like a third of the money. So maybe we'll get one of those out and just kind of do some comparison and shoot one of those and see how it holds up. Uh, but don't worry. I mean, there, there are a lot of copies of these guns out there that are pretty solid for what they are. So maybe that's something we can look at in a future video. Uh, but we wanted to, you know, definitely pay homage to the, uh, to the man himself. I mean, the M3 is the man in the room, buddy. I mean, this is, this is a great piece of hardware, definitely a worthy shotgun uh, that you can trust your life to. Just a fantastic piece of hardware. Uh, big thank you to all the folks who purchase man cans, who support us on Patreon. Thank you so much for believing in what we do and supporting our content. we got many more videos on the way. I really appreciate all of you watching. Uh, we are going to beautify the berm a little bit. I mean, we've made an ugly mess out here, but uh, we've we got some cleaning up to do. But that, that's all right. We'll get that handled. Have a great day. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon. I'm going to go visit the, the chiropractor after those bear loads got me going here.